worship. Oh, we build you a throne of worship.
was at home, but she said that she um, she was seeing an infrared, and she said she saw Josh come into the building, and he was glowing red and orange. And she said then she saw the people come into the building, and they were they started glowing red and orange. And she said as we worshipped everything started turning white and it was spreading throughout the region and the community and she said and then she said I saw demons that were just snarling and they they hated what was going on but she said they couldn't do anything because of the light it was just so bright super powerful so when we worship we are ushering in his presence there's nothing like his presence we just worship you father we thank you for what you are doing in this place god we thank you there is no one like you there is none beside you father father we thank you for moving breathing on these people god breathing on this school and this region father god we worship you we thank you for what you are doing in the lives of these students that are in this building father Lord, that you are transforming, God, their lives, their home lives, Father. God, we just, we welcome you, God. We welcome you in a greater degree, a greater measure than we've ever experienced before. God, we are just stepping into, we're just stepping into, God, what you are wanting to do. Father, we say more. We say, send the rain here. God, send the rain here, Jesus. Take what the enemy meant for evil 
You turn it for good. You turn it for good. But you take what the enemy meant for evil. You turn it for good. You turn it for good. You're turning it around. But you take what the enemy meant for evil. You turn it for good. You turn it for Take what the enemy meant for evil. You turn it for good. You turn it for good. But you take what the enemy meant for evil. You turn it for good. You turn it for good. You're doing it not. But you take what the enemy meant for evil. You turn it for you turn it for good And I'm gonna see victory I'm gonna see victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord And I'm gonna see victory I'm gonna see victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you,
are still being moved and strongholds are still being loosed God we believe and yes we can see it that wonders are still what you do and bodies are still being raised and my giants are still being slain God we believe Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here.
is coming in this room miracles happen when you move heaven is coming and miracles happen when you move healing is coming in this room miracles happen
this is a move. Oh, he's here, and this is a move. Healing is here, and this is a move. Heaven is here, and this is a move. Oh, take us higher, take us higher, take us deeper, take us deeper, cause this is a move. Yeah. This is a move. 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 Right where we're standing. Father, we thank you for coming into this place again. Even so different than last week, but still your goodness that flows. And we just give you glory because we know when it's good, it's you. And Lord, we 
defer every ounce of glory to you. We hold no crowns. We lay them at your feet. And we give honor to you in this house. And we say thank you, God, for having your way among the people. Thank you, God, for miracles breaking out in the room, in bodies, in homes, in families, in marriages. God, thank you for miracles breaking out in the room. Thank you for renewing a fire, renewing a fire in people. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Man. Wind of heaven blow. Wind of heaven blow. Yeah. I see, this is something I see right now. I just, if, you're, if you're near your spouse, I just want you to grab them by the hand. And I just, I'm, I'm just going to pray just for a... Man, I'm, I'm, I'm just believing for something here. Father, I thank you, God, for a fresh fire in the marriage. God, what the enemy has tried to come against, Lord, we say that you are raising up a standard. God, that we need, the, God, we need this people to prosper in their marriage. We need them to prosper in business. We need them to prosper, God, in, in, in family, God. We need them to prosper in all that they do, that they become a light and a witness to all, God, that, that this is what God has done in us, and he can do it in you. God, a marriage on fire is a testimony, God, to others. A marriage on fire is a testimony, God, to others, God. And I just speak blessing over the marriage. God, there are some that aren't represented in the room, and we pray a protection over them. We pray a blessing over them, God. God, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. God, I just see a refreshing wind of, of, of first union again. I just see a refreshing wind of, of unity again in the marriage and in the home, Father. And I thank you, God, for doing that. I thank you, God, for doing that. I see the Lord coming in and he's cleaning out the dirt and the gears. He's cleaning out the dirt and the gears. It's like uh, gear cogs that are, that are clicking together and it's causing cylinders to fire. And, and there's been some misfiring. There's been some misfiring because the, the gears aren't, aren't clicking as they should. I don't, I don't, this is not even my type of language. But, but uh, Lord, the, the, the gears haven't been clicking as they should. But, God, I see the wheels clicking together. I see God polishing them as fine gold, saying the things that I've brought you through have been refining the gears of your life, and you will click and fire on all cylinders again. I speak that over your marriage. I speak that over your marriage. A cleaning out of the gears. A cleaning out of the gears will be like a, a clearing of the throat. It'll be like a clearing of the throat where the voice is muffled and 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 and, and, and sputtering, but, but God is saying there's a clearing of the throat. There's a clearing of the gears. There's a clearing of the there's a clearing of the error code. Man. There's a clearing of the error code. Forgiveness is coming in, and there's a clearing of the error code, and I see the cylinders firing again. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Fresh wind, fresh fire, fresh love, resting, cocooning your marriage and your home. I thank you, God, for doing that. I give you glory for it. In the mighty name of Yahweh. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thanks, worship team. Awesome job. Man, um, I, I, we had a couple. Yulia was telling me, or somebody was telling me. Yulia was telling me, right? Did you tell me Ian had a word? One of you guys had a word? from this morning 
a corporate word. I want you to I want you to come and release that. And then I want Charlotte, Charlotte, you said you saw I want you to come and just I don't know, just get in line here. Does that work? Let's let Ian go first. My wife says, stand in the middle. Um, uh, when we were praying back there, I, I uh, the Lord's been speaking to me about uh, expectation and uh, uh, how we expect the people that we are... Uh, I, I've just gone back to work. So the people that I am kind of gun shy around, you know, those kind of people where you just go, whoa, we got to watch it when we're around these people. And I have people I work with and employees like that. Um, and and I asked the Lord, w- what is that? And he said to me, it's you don't know what you're going to get <laughs> with these people. Sorry. And so uh, he said to me, it's, it's uh, inconsistency. And so when I got in uh, to, to uh, pray today, he was talking to me about the same thing again. He was talking to me about consistency. And he spoke to me about that one of the best weapons we have against the enemy is consistency. So when the enemy comes and things don't go our way and adversity and attacks come our way, he showed me this morning what the enemy doesn't want is consistency. He doesn't want you to do the same thing regardless of what's coming in. Regardless of the attack, the Bible says, give thanks in all, all circumstances. He says, my lips will continually praise you. And he showed me our greatest weapon is against the enemy's attacks is just consistency. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter if things don't look right. It doesn't matter if things didn't work out. We're going to thank him, and we're going to praise him, and we're going to do it consistently. And the more consistent we are, the more we defuse and weaken the attacks of the enemy. And what he meant for evil, then God can work for good. Hi. (laughs) Thanks, worship team. Thank you. you. You bring such a place for God's revelation and wisdom to be downloaded Um, and the songs and everything that goes in and through worship, um, for me anyway, puts me in a place where I can see the wisdom of God in such a beautiful place as a seer. It it just brings it to a vivid reality. So thanks, worship team. Okay, so um, as I was worshiping, the first part when we were singing and the king is here, I saw Jesus dancing up here with us all, just so you know. He was here dancing. And then, um, then I, took, I was taken up into the heavenlies, and um, it was a battle line, and we were all in battle, and um, we were stood with our left side towards the darkness and towards the enemy, and our left side was completely armored with like a silver um, enameled um, armor, and in it was, was Hebrew letters, so it was like the words of the Lord, his names, it was just deep and richly, um, fully armored. Our left side was fully armored, our head, everything, fully armored. And it was against the darkness, but our face was forward. And it was, the king of the battle was in front of us. So we weren't looking to the, the the enemy was there. We were aware of it. We were very conscious of it, but we weren't looking at it. We were looking at the king of the battle. We were looking at the one who the battle belongs to. And he was stood there and he was looking, he was in each of us to look to our own weapons. So we're already armored, but on this side was our weaponry. And each person had different weaponry, whether it was dance, whether it was song, whether it was writing, whether it was preaching, whether it was teaching. We all had different weaponry on our right side, and this side was golden and and flowing and fluid and, and bright, and we had a big 
cape robe thing on, and some of us had wings, and um, and then and then when we were singing something about the mountains being moved, I saw it's a mountain out on this side, which was the darkness side, literally just shifted into God's kingdom, and it was used to climb up above and see further. So when when you hear that phrase, a mountain is going to be moved, we often think, oh, it's going to mean a, a straighter path for us to walk. But in this case, God moved it so we could have the elevation over the enemy. And so I don't know what everybody, I know everybody's got little things going on in their lives, but I just wanted to encourage you that when God moves the mountain, it might be for an elevated position. And also to keep um, your eyes on your weaponry, not on the enemy. Keep your eyes on the king, uh, the the lord of the battle, and whatever weaponry he has designed for you to walk in, because that's where you're going to excel. And um, also, if you have wings, learn to use them. Amen. I hope y'all got that. Mark it down. If not, you can go back and get the recording later of it. And uh, um, consistency, and I was uh, consistency being consistent. When Ian was talking, is that that scripture? The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. The one that is persistent and consistent, and what they're believing for, and what they're going after, and what they're speaking. Listen, your words are framing your world. Make sure that you're not living in a fantasy land of a negative reality when you can live in the dream of Yahweh by speaking and echoing in the earth what Yahweh has said about your life. Yeah, Hebrews 11 says, says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders have obtained a good report. For the very worlds were formed by the words of God, by the word of God. Your world is being formed by his word. Make sure you're parroting the right word in your life of the the consistently parroting the echo of heaven. In the upper room when 120 were there, it said that they were in one mind and one accord and then they heard a sound from heaven. That word sound is the Greek word echos where we get the word echo which means that what was being sounded in the heavens was literally being heard in the earth. Come into agreement with God's words and His dreams, and you will begin to release a frequency and a sound in the earth that the nations will seek out. Man, I I need just an hour there so I can have another hour for what I need later. You're going to be sought out ones, man. Cities set on a hill shall not be hidden. Are you with me? There's a time where God hides you in things to mature you to the proper place where that when things become exposed, not in a negative sense, but in a positive sense, when He begins to reveal you that you don't lose focus on the stage you're standing on, but you are fixed on the one that puts you on the stage. There are people that live life and they become flash in the pans. They don't possess what God has placed them on. Man, there's all kinds of stuff. Never let your calling take you where your character cannot keep you. But character is developed in the waiting, in those in those processes of when nobody is watching and everything else is seeming like chaos around me, but there's something of constant and consistency within me that says I'm going to, and as Charlotte was saying, I'm going to keep my vision fixed in the in the my focal point in the right spot. I was hearing somebody talk about the 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 birthing room when when uh, when when the bride when when the when his wife went into the birthing room they basically told her to pick a spot on the wall pick a spot a clock something pick something and focus on that spot 
I, I, don't, I don't know. Apparently it helps with the pushing and it helps with the pain tolerance when you don't focus on the pain that you're going through, but you pick a pivotal point in the room and you begin to focus on that. It helps. It's not that it's not painful, but it helps through the pushing process of it all. And I just want to encourage you in the moment through all the pain and all the chaos and all the misunderstandings and all the miscommunications and all the backstabbing and all the... And and all the, the things that seem like that they didn't go as you had planned, fix your vision on Him, and it will release a stability in your life of consistency because your focus is in the right spot. Yeah. That's good stuff. I want to encourage you this morning that something's breaking through in your life, even now. I, in, in the worship, I saw two pictures. God speaks to me in pictures a lot, and um, pictures are worth a thousand words, so I try to maximize those thousand words. He speaks to me in pictures, and, and the two pictures that I've seen, I saw, I saw the hills of the Ozarks just cracking open in a positive sense, not because an earthquake was coming, but because what had been t- what had been possibly even covered up by the enemy or whatever, but there was something breaking through the surface and coming into the light through expectation. And these grounds hold seeds, and these seeds are bursting forth. And I saw a picture of the, of the jet breaking the sound barrier. I don't know if you, you can Google that. I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of that. But when the when the when the uh, when the Navy jets or the or the when when the when the the military jets or whatever, when, the, when if they're fast enough, they can break the sound barrier. And when they do, it creates a it creates a sound wave, and they catch it uh, they catch it on camera when 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 this happens, or they can now through technology, and they catch this on camera, and it's like there's this cloud of of resistance that is being broke through, and I I, I even reminded my, I was reminded of that Margaret uh, or that not, that painting that Margaret. Margaret Hughes painted, and she painted after a service of a, of a fist like breaking through the water. I don't know if you remember that painting, but it was a fist breaking through like water, and it was a it was a sign of breakthrough that was happening. And I just felt the Lord was saying, "Breakthrough." The time of your greatest stretching and the time of your greatest resistance is right there at the moment of breakthrough when it's time to birth what you've been carrying. And it comes that moment of birthing. It's not at that moment that you go on vacation. It's not on that moment that it gets easier. It's at that moment the thing that's been germinating in you for nine months, the thing that's been incubating in you for nine months, it's the greatest push of your life life right here that I am about to release the thing I've been carrying these all these months and I see us at a moment of great resistance I don't know if it's just corporately I don't what individually for somebody but a moment of great resistance and I'm telling you that you are right here don't stop pushing immediately something's happening Man, thank you, Holy Ghost. I see it like this. Uh, the, the, lady, the lady that was healed of the issue of blood, and I encourage you to take a Sharpie and change that heading in your Bible because it just says the lady with the issue of blood or, you know, something like that. And, and she lived the rest of her life healed. So I don't know what those Bible people were thinking there when they put that heading in there. She was healed the rest of her life. Her name's not even a certain woman. But, but, but many of your headings are just like a certain woman with issue of blood. No, she was healed. Stop remembering her for the thing, the issue that she had going on and remember her for what, how she lived the rest of her life. Healed and what God did in her and what he did in her. But she had to fight through the press. The scripture says that she fought through the press of the crowd. Sometimes there's things that are pressing up against you and you've got to keep pushing through to get to the moment where you touch him on purpose and immediately the issue in your life dries up 
And I see this going on in our life right now in the atmosphere over your head where there is a breakthrough moment that is here. And I want to encourage you just to keep pushing through all the nonsense, keep pushing through all the noise, keep pushing through all the things that you did not understand. Your moment of breakthrough is closer than you think. Stay focused and stay consistent because God is saying breakthrough is here. I thought you'd be more excited about that. Father, I just pray into these things, and I say yes to consistency. It's not always the grandiose things, God, that define maturity, but God, it's the consistency of the elementary principles that mature us into the impulses of the Spirit of Yahweh. Yahweh, we invite you into the room. yod heh vav heh Give us an ear to hear. God, give us a grace this morning for an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and it not get drowned out in the noise of our presuppositions, but that we become more one with you than we've ever been. And I thank you, Father, for that. Thank you for the armor you've given us and the protection that you've given us in the heavy dose of Psalm 91. Thank you, God, for what falls at our side, but it cannot come our dwelling. Thank you, God, for what may stalk at noon, but I don't have to live in fear because I am one that is in the Spirit of the Lord. Come what may, but God, be in your presence. Come what may, but Lord, let us be and live and move and have our being in your presence. I thank you, God, for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let me read some stuff to you. I think we're going to have some fun today. If you haven't already, then I don't know what's wrong with you anyway, but we'll pray for you. I need to, I need to, review, uh, I need to review seven things before I can give you the eight new things that you need to hear. And so... Let's, let's, um, we're going to go to Romans chapter number eight. We're going to go to Genesis chapter number three. And I need to, I need to grab a couple things probably beforehand before, before we, before we end up in, in that particular position. I want to go back to uh, a couple weeks ago of being made one in Christ. First John chapter number four. In fact, I just want to go there and, and just read a little bit. First John chapter number four. You can hang out in Romans eight if you want to. I'll, I'll be there in a minute. Verse seven. Those who are loved by God, let His love continually pour from you to one another, because God is love. Everyone who loves His Father, everyone who loves is fathered by God and experiences an intimate knowledge of, uh, of of Him. The one who doesn't love has yet to know God, for God is love. The light of God's love shined within us when He sent His matchless Son into the world, so that we may live through Him. This is love. He loved us long before He lo- we loved him. It was his love, not ours. He proved it by sending his son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sins. Delightfully loved ones, if he loved us with such tremendous love, then loving one another should be our way of life. No one has ever gazed upon the fullness of God's splendor, but if we love one another, God makes his permanent home in us, and we make our permanent home in him, and his love is brought to us to to its full expression rather, in us. And He has given us His Spirit within us so that we can have the assurance that He lives in us, that we live in Him. Moreover, we have seen with our own eyes and can testify to the truth that Father God has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. Those who give thanks that Jesus is the Son of God live in God, and God lives in them. I want you just to continue to catch this like this First John four language. It reminds you of of John John uh, the, the Gospel of John seventeen or the love letter of John, however you want to uh, connotate that. Uh, the love letter of John seventeen, the language of John fifteen, abide in me and I. 
Adonai in you, John 17, the prayer of the prayer of Yeshua, that, that the Father Yahweh has loved, He loves you with the same love that He has for me. So God is love. God is love. Those who are living in God are, are lo- those who are living in love are living in God, and God lo- lives through them by living in God. Verse seventeen: Love has been brought to its full expression in us, so that we are th- that we may fear- fearlessly face the day of judgment. So love is is causing us to fearlessly face things. The day of judgment, not as you think. Love. You've heard it. Perfect love casts out all fear. In verse 17, we'll have open faces of the day of judgment. The true believer filled with God's love. The day of of judgment is not to be feared but looked forward to. For perfect love will have made us completely like Christ. Love provides us with no reason to fear the future or fear punishment from God. Are you with me? Because all, now listen here, because all that Jesus now is, so are we in this world. Just the end right there. All that Jesus, if you are living in love and love is living in you and you are becoming one with him, not all that, not all that he will be, but all that he is, you are in this world. Are you with me? Uh, you got to hear it. you got to hear it. Romans 8, 30 said, Having determined our destiny ahead of time, He called us to Himself and transferred His perfect righteousness to everyone He called. And those who possess His perfect righteousness, He, co-glor- he co-glorified with His Son. You didn't get a junior version of glorification, and you didn't get a junior version of the, His Spirit, but the same Spirit that lived in Him and raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also quicken your mortal body, not your immortal one. Let me help you here before you ran off too deep into eschatology and didn't know what you're thinking. Let me help you right here. It's not about your immortal body, but your mortal body that gets quickened by the Spirit of Yahweh living and reigning in you. Are you with me? I need you to think that way because you'll, you'll run off and start thinking in some age that is to come and you've, you're missing the age now of what he's sending that I now, I now can be possessed by the same Spirit that gripped his life and raised him from the dead. All that he is, I am and can be in this world. Think about that. Uh, don't, and again, I say it, don't get mad at me for reading the Bible you brought in. Ephesians 2, 6, he raised us up with Christ, the exalted one, and we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm, for we are now co-seated as one with Christ. That word co-seated seated is to be placed or seated in heaven, in, heaven, in heaven means we have been given the perfection and authority to be there. What's, the scripture says that we boldly go into the throne room and, and, and beg and ask and ask for. You boldly go into the throne room. Let me just stop right there. You boldly go into the throne room is not somebody that wanders in there curious if they belong, but somebody that boldly goes into the place, thinks that they have keys to the house. Man, are you with me right now? Colossians 3, 1 through 4. Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. Silah. Think about that, man. Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. This is why we are to yearn for all that is above, for that's where Christ sits enthroned, at the place of all power, honor, and authority. Yes, feast on all the treasures of heaven of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities and not with the distractions of the natural realm. Your crucifixion with Christ has severed the tie to this life, and now your true life is hidden away in God in Christ, and as Christ himself is seen for who he really is, who you really are will also be revealed for you are now one with him in his glory. Are you with me? Perfect love casts out all fear. The fear of God cannot be married to the fear of punishment. Are you with me? I need you to, I need you to grasp this. 
I, I fear the Lord. That's a good thing. The beginning of all wisdom is the fear of the Lord. But fearing the Lord is not a good father about to smash your head because you got it wrong. But it's Him picking you up so that He makes sure that that way of thinking was finished in you and you get it right. The fear of the Lord is not married to punishment and wrath from Abba towards His children. The fear of the Lord is married to honor, reverence, and glory given to Yahweh. When you you revere Him, you honor Him, and you give Him glory, you are operating in the fear of the Lord. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of all wisdom. You choosing to give honor, reverence, and glory to Yahweh is the birthing place for true wisdom to be delivered into your life. When you start saying, I'm going to honor you, revere you, and give you glory in all things, you, my friend, are operating in the spirit of wisdom. Yeah, it's not just a good idea. It's, a, it's, it's what God's dream is for you. All right, I hope you got that. Let's go to Romans chapter number 8. These are some of the things. If, if you didn't get all that, you can go back two weeks ago. I think that was two weeks ago when we were, when we were speaking into that. In Romans chapter number 8, Let's, let's not read that yet. Let's read, let's read Genesis 3. I was just kidding. Romans 8. I'm going there in just a moment. But before we get Romans 8, we need to grab Genesis 3. Verse number 1. Now the snake was the most cunning of all beings that Yahweh God had made. He deviously asked the woman, Did God really tell you you must not eat fruit from any tree of the garden? But the woman interrupted We may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden except the tree in the center of the garden. God told us don't eat its fruit or even touch it or you will die. Okay, first of all, she's confused at this moment because Yahweh said nothing about not touching the tree. There is no mention in our scripture. There, go back, you can go back and read the account of what his instructions were. He said, don't eat of its fruit. But there was no mention of God forbidding touching the fruit tree. Eve was adding to God's command. (laughs) Man, thank you, Holy Ghost. When you start adding to what Yahweh has put in place, you will end up in the legalism and you will start eating fruit that you never desired. I need you to follow this. This looks like 2,000 years ago when you had to go through 100 regulations to get clean in the eyes of Yahweh, and he shows up and he starts revealing himself to the prostitutes. And, the, and, and come on, are you with me? And, and, and the unclean and this people and that people and, 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 and to the demon possessed and, and all these other ones, they are seeing what the ones that knew the most about the Messiah could not see. She starts adding to the command of God. You can't even touch it. Well, now the enemy's just reeling because he's already got her on the hook. First of all, let me help you right here. Know what God said. (laughs) Know what He says. When you don't know what Yahweh says about your life, you are in danger of taking the bait to live on the proving ground that the enemy of your soul wants to put you on. You know where He's going to attack you? In your identity. This is the attack of the enemy. Be not ignorant of his devices. He is coming against your identity that you are not the beloved of God. Come on, man. Know who you are. But the snake said to her, you certainly won't die. God knows that the moment you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like 
God knowing both good and evil. Genesis 1.26 said, let us make them, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And he's telling her that if you'll eat this fruit, you'll become like God. If you knew who you were, then you, your response in this moment should have been, Jack, I'm already like God. Know what he says about your life. I've pointed this out to you before, but I want to point it out again in this moment because I feel like it's relevant. But I also need to point out the moment she starts adding to the command of God, there's now another rule that God never said. And there's this rule put in place of something that man's rules will never live up. They will never live up. John 1, 17. The law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The rules of man. Now, Josh, those were God's rules given to Moses. They came through the imperfect vehicle of man. But then they came into perfection, and he came to fulfill all that the law could not hold up. We'll read it here in Romans 8 in just a moment. But it's, it's so interesting here. Know what God said about your life. Know what he said about your life. Don't, don't be adding to the commands of God, know what he's asking you to do, and try to do that with all of your heart, and even when you fail, don't live staring at your failure, but understand that it is still finished in me, and though the righteous fall, yea, seven times, they keep on getting up, and no matter what that I'm up against, and what that I have stumbled in, or what that I chose to jump in, sometimes some people stumble and some people jump, and no matter which one that it is, I can still come out refined by what Yahweh said I'm going to work it for your good you already like God Eve it's real interesting because 4,000 years later he shows up in, in Matthew chapter number 3 actually I'm sorry in Matthew chapter number 4 and, and he does the exact same thing the very last verse of Matthew 3 Jesus was baptized and he came up immediately from the water and behold the heavens were open he saw the spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting on him and then there was a voice from the heaven said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased first uh, Matthew chapter 4 verse number 1 then Jesus was led up in the spirit to be tempted by the devil and after he had fasted 40 days he then became hungry and the enemy came to him the tempter came to him and said to him if you really are the son of God command these stones to become bread. The very last thing God said in Matthew 3 was, this is my beloved son. The very first thing the enemy says in Matthew 4 is, if you really are him. Because he came to restore what the first Adam lost, which was identity of who that he was. Man, I want to help you right here. Don't live your life on the proving ground, trying to prove to your enemy who you are in Him. Fix your vision on Him and hear what He says about your life in His scroll in heaven. Yeah. Know who you are. Know who you are. Romans chapter 8. Thousands of years after Genesis 3. Verse number 1. Jesus has came to restore what the first Adam lost. Uh, Luke, Luke uh, 10, 19 says the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. Not, not just those who were lost, but that which is lost. What is the that that was lost? It was the dominion. It was the authority. It was the identity of man that has lost his way throughout the chronological timeline of who he is and who he's been created to be. Verse number 1, Romans 8. So now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. I want you to think about that. For the law, the spirit of life flowing through the, anointed, uh, the anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law of sin and of death. For God achieved what the law was unable to accomplish because the law was limited by the weakness of human nature. Yet God sent us his son in human form from the identity, form to identify with human weakness rather. Clothed with humanity, God's son gave his body to be the sin offering so that God could once and for all condemn the guilt and power of sin. So now every righteous 
requirement of the law can be fulfilled through the anointed one living his life in us. He's living in us, and we are living in him. Abide in me, I abide in you. And we are free to live, not according to our flesh, but by the dynamic power of Holy Spirit. Those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves, but those who live by the impulses of Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual realities. For the mindset on flesh is death, but the mindset controlled by the Spirit finds life and peace. In fact, the mindset focused on the flesh fights God's plan and refuses to submit to its direction because it cannot, for no matter how hard they try, God finds no pleasure with those who are controlled by the flesh. But when the Spirit of Christ empowers your life, you are not dominated by flesh, but by the Spirit. And if you are not joined to the Spirit of the Anointed One, you're not of Him. Now Christ lives His life in you. And even though your body may be dead because of the effects of sin, His life-giving Spirit imparts life to you because you are fully accepted by God. You are fully accepted by God. Yes, yes, God raised Jesus to life, and since God's Spirit of resurrection lives in you, He will also raise your dying body to life by the same Spirit that breathes life into you. So then, beloved ones, the flesh has no claims on us at all. There's no, the, the case is closed. There's no accusing voice. There's no condemnation. There's no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. The flesh has no claims on us. We have no further obligation to live in obedience to flesh. For you live controlled by flesh. You're, if you live controlled by flesh, you're about to die. But if the life of the Spirit puts to death the corrupt ways of the flesh, then we taste His abundant life. Watch, watch how maturity is defined, because you thought maturity was defined by like, you know, good leaders are like they got it all planned out and somebody prepared their sermon six months ahead of time, and that's good leadership because Holy Spirit told them and they're right in tune with that and all this. Let me, let me help you right here. What are you going to do when He shows up on Sunday? The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of Holy Spirit. What impulses are you moving to will determine the maturity of what Yahweh is releasing in your life. The maturity of sons and daughters are not those who think they all have it, they have it all figured out and they have all this. Listen, have a plan so you know when Yahweh changes it. That's absolutely fine. We had a I don't I don't I didn't talk to Sydney, but she probably had a plan of three songs in here. And I could have changed that. She could have changed that. That would have been okay. I I didn't plan on Charlotte speaking. I didn't plan on Ian speaking. I didn't plan on that. They told me that they, there was a word that is this and, and so be led by the impulse pulses of Holy Spirit and let the stage be clear enough that you can let Yahweh have the moment and say, whatever you want to release, we're going to receive. Are you with me? This is interesting. The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of Holy Spirit. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty. Make note of that because your, your translation probably says you have it. You didn't receive the spirit of fear. That's what it says. That word, you didn't receive the spirit of, of, of religious duty. That, that actually means the spirit of slavery. You didn't receive the spirit of slavery leading you back into the leading you back into fear. Watch it here, of never being good enough. I just read to you like seven scriptures ago. You are fully accepted by God. Now I'm going. I, I was I was hearing this earlier. I was hearing somebody talk about this, and it just it just kept bubbling and stirring in my spirit and rocking my world here. Let me let me help you here. I read to you in in Genesis three because this listen entire denominations start with this total depravity. Are you with me? Maybe maybe you haven't heard that. I'm, I'm telling it to you now. Entire denominations started with the total with total depravity. Other denominations within their doctrinal statements, they want you to know about the fall of man and that, that you are, and, and listen, I want, I want to help you because I think that Yahweh's about to reclaim some things here, and, and I may be, we may be a little bit, uh, 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 I don't even want to go there, but I, I, just, I, just, I just want to help you right here, that you were, that, this, that the people want you to believe through their doctrines and their theologies that you were born in a depraved state. Are you with me? Maybe you haven't heard that. I don't know. It's you know new to you now, so don't run off into it because I'm going to bring you out of it. 
You were born into a depraved state because of the fall of man now that we have all fallen and that we are all born into a depraved state. But here's the, here's the thing. If you're born into depravity, then why would a baby go to heaven? Man. I don't know. I, listen, I don't have all the answers. I know somebody out there probably figured this out. You know, it's like, you know, and they want to tell you things like age of accountability. That's nowhere in your Bible. Is there any, go, go search all 66 books and, and you will not find this term age of accountability. I know somebody told you that because they didn't know what to say. And so they thought this sounds good. This sounds right. Let's go with that. Is it what Yahweh said or is it what man's rules were added to God's commands that caused us to start eating fruit that we were never designed to eat? Were you born into depravity or were you born into the image? Because God didn't say, let us make them in our image and our likeness. And then everybody after that, they, you know, their image sucks. But the first ones, they were really good. I made, I made this one really good in my image, but everyone after him was made in Adam's image. No, everyone after him was still made in God's image. And so Yahweh shows up to restore what the first Adam lost. He lost the image that he was bearing up in the earth. He, the, he came back for not a lost people to get them a get out of hell free card. Listen, friend, getting out of hell is a really good thing, but that's not what God came for is so that you don't live a life. He didn't even create hell for you, so why would he come here to save you from hell? hell. He came here to get you into a kingdom reality of getting rooted in a kingdom and getting you back into the identity that his name is Abba and your name is beloved. He was a father. Come on, are you with me right now? He was Yahweh Abba father before Romans 8 was written. And what I need to understand is there's a good father in heaven that has good things for me as a son or daughter and I don't have to live this lie that I've came into all these fallen natures and this is just how life is and this is just the hand that I'm dealt. You can continue to play the hand that you're dealt and I'm not talking about heaven or hell here. And I'm not talking about that. Listen, I don't live my life not, 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 like there's no points throughout my day anymore. Thank you, God. There's no points throughout my day anymore that I'm wondering, am I going to heaven or hell? If that's you, I invite you out of that. That is religion. That is religion. This, this religion is this fickle God that allows all his sons to get repossessed in 24 hours. What kind of father is he? Are you with me? Listen, listen, listen. Josh, is anybody going to be in hell? Absolutely. Was it created for them? Absolutely not. If you refuse to separate yourself from the father of lies that shot like lightning, then you too will shoot like lightning. Hell is real and heaven is real. Don't be in a hurry to get to either place. That's fun. Probably funner to say than here. You did not receive a spirit of slavery, religious duty, leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. In Genesis 3, Satan introduces Eve to a father that would withhold. You got to get it. A father that would withhold from me because I'm not good enough as his daughter I'm not, I'm not good enough, and now I need to start eating fruit from other arenas because I'm not good enough. Maybe you, don't, maybe you don't feel like that you have anybody in your life telling you that you're not good enough at this moment. Maybe you had somebody in your life at a previous moment telling you you're not good enough. I want you to know that some, there's sometimes, can I just get real in, in, with me right now? There's times when we, we go home and my wife tells me, it was, it was good. It was, really, it was good, Josh. It was, you, did, you did good. And then something in my mind, but is it enough? There's something in me that is in a battle. Is this good enough? God, if it's good enough, then, then where are all the people? 
And sometimes I have to fight the temptation because we got enough money to do it. The, God, I can start a marketing campaign. I can start a marketing campaign. I can get, God, I know right now, if I, you know, I, we, got, we got the money. We can, have, we can have enough people in this building to break all the social distancing rules next week. And I have to fight this temptation or I want to keep my crappy sign out by the road and stay hidden. Where somebody like 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 I don't even know how some people just find us like like they email me in the week hey I like I found I found your website and I'm like like dude I don't I don't like we are not the top hit on Google I don't even know if we're the eighth there's got to be over a hundred other churches in this area but there is something that come on we're on a dead end road right now they're about to extend it but it's dead end right now but it's called Grace Lane. Sometimes there is a grace to be hidden where God is maturing something in you at the foundational level that He says this is going to become a city set on a hill, but I need somebody willing to stay hidden in the dirt to steward the seed. In the times of waiting, you better know who you are. I'm like God. That's, 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 a, that's a hard pill to swallow because religion wants to make you believe everything else because you're, you're in a depraved state and you, and you have to have a Savior to come and rescue you. And this is, this is, this is, the, problem. This is the problem with that particular... I, I, listen, I believe, I believe the depravity of man is a lie based on how we've believed it. I'm not telling you that depravity. I'm not telling you there's no depravity. I'm telling you it's a lie on based on how that we believed it because we weren't, are you with me right now? That this is how that we're, we're in this fallen state trying to prove who that we are and Jesus came to restore the, a, a thinking pattern that I am Abba and you are beloved. I'm fully accepting you. I'm fully accepting you as my son, as my daughter. And you don't have to go back into the slavery. He calls religious duties slavery. You don't have to go back into the slavery that is leading you into this fear of never being good enough. You know how many people we've counseled and how many people we've talked to and how many people we've tried to break this chain off of. Even they may come into kingdom culture, but their background wasn't kingdom thinking and they came out of Pentecostal places and they came out of Catholic places and they came out of a Baptist place and they came out of all these other places and they've got these, come on man, I'm not talking about the, the chain of denomination here I'm talking about the chain of thinking that they came into something that had them believing that they would never be good enough and they had to wash this cup and they had to wear this outfit and you had to wear your hair like this and you couldn't put this kind of makeup on and you had to go through all these added commands of man to get to Yahweh and it was never going to let you be good enough but Jesus sent his son and said that I will fully accept you and I'm going to cry out it is finished not just my work on the earth I'm not telling you this chapter is finished I'm telling you that way of thinking is over his name is Abba and your name is beloved receive me and you'll be one with me and I'll be one with you. You never have to go into slavery of that thinking again. You never have to go into the slavery of that thinking. Religious duty. You know what they were doing in their day? They, 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 listen, they had these crazy nonsensical rules that if they watched, if they washed couches and cups and, and they washed these things and, and it was like, like, come on, man. You, you, listen, come on. This is their complaint. Jesus, your disciples didn't wash their hands before they ate. I think it's a good idea to wash your hands before you eat. But I, listen, this is what they're, they're hung up on this. He said, you, you, they, you walk half a day to become twice the son of the devil. Come on, man. This is what you're hung up on. You're hung up on all these rules and regulations. And I'm here fulfilling the law. Man. Man, man, man. Think you're, you're not going to be right in religion. You might as well forget it. You just need to come out of that because you're never going to be good enough and you're never going to be right if you stay in religion. They, come, they, they, they hated John. They beheaded John. 
he didn't he didn't drink he didn't drink strong drink he didn't drink wine he ate grasshoppers and, and honey grasshoppers stuck in his beard man a, he had you know a leather belt around his waist his food was locusts and wild honey and all of Jerusalem and Samaria was going out to him to be baptized in the Jordan and for, to be baptized in the Jordan as they repented of his and he's saying I'm baptizing you with repentance but there's one coming after me that's mightier than I and he I'm not fit to untie his sandal but he's going to baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire they hated John for this repent the kingdom's at hand message not drinking any drink then they hated Jesus and he showed up turning you know wine you know water into wine hate them if they drink hate them if they don't because religion is always going to find a way to make sure that you know that you're never going to be enough because religion wants you to believe that you are the garbage scum of the earth and you are the dung of the earth but then when you say yes to Jesus he takes his whitewashed he takes his whitewashed clothing and he puts over you as white as snow that now you can be made righteousness through him no 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 let me help you right here let me help you right here quit adding all these hoops for me to jump in to get to Yahweh let me just say yes to him and then in that moment I become full accepted by God that I wasn't just I wasn't just this come on I was created in his image even at birth but I lost my way along the way and he had to hear his voice to get back on track maybe you weren't born as jacked up as you thought you were you just lost your way and he came to restore what was lost there was a lost coin. There was a lost sheep. There was a lost... Are you with me right now? There was a lost this. There was a lost that. But the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. Sons and daughters that have lost the dream of heaven for their identity and their life. And I'm here and I'm restoring it. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen the Father, you've seen me. And then when he came, when you take part in that resurrection, that burial, that, re that ascension, death, burial, resurrection, ascension, when you take part in that, that his resurrection is my resurrection, and I am a present resurrection that is walking. I'm a dead. Come on. I was dead, but now I'm alive, and I, was, I, I got born again, not just saved. You got saved, but then you can also get born again, and when you get born again, you're born again from above, from heavenly things, and this is happening and being practiced within you. I'm being one with him. I'm not going to receive a slavery saying I'm not going to be good enough. It's slave, th The thinking of I'll never be good enough is slavery in your life. Maybe there's something in you and I just feel like this, this needs to be broken off of people. There's this thing in me sometimes that just goes off. Now is, is that enough? Is it enough? Is it enough? And you think you might lose that with Yahweh in the next 72 hours. Let me help you. You're not. Can I help you with that? Look, I'm not telling you you won't screw up. I'm not telling you you can't do something in the next 72 hours that's going to cost you a life in prison or something like that. I'm not, I'm not telling you that. I'm saying that you're not going to lose out with God because of your, because of your foolish mistake. Even the failures that are behind me, it is finished over what's behind me. Let's shift that. I became a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. And it's easy for me to understand that the new thing's ahead of me. That like everything ahead of me is now new because I've received Jesus. But I want to let you know that everything behind you, all things became new. So my past even became new. I can no longer stare at my past outside of the lens of Jesus. It's illegal for me to look at yesterday outside of the spectacles of Jesus. I have to see everything through him. And when I look at it through him, it doesn't even exist like it did then. But I was just, I was just who I was supposed to be. Man. You've received this. Let me hear and you did not receive the spirit of religious duty leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. But you, what did you, that's not what you received according to Romans 8. Romans 8 is not some eschatology chapter. It's for right here and right now. Not sweet by and by, but dirty now and now, right? If I did not receive that, then what did I receive? You have received the spirit of full acceptance. The spirit of adult sonship. The Aramaic can be translated the spirit of consecrated children. 
Think about that. Hello, Jeremiah 1, 5. Come on, before I, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you, I ordained you, I consecrated you to be a prophet to the nations. Before I formed you, I yada, I knew you. I ordained you, I consecrated you. So I know that you thought that you were born in all this jacked up state, but I just want to encourage you right here. You have just got to come into the revelation of who you are and who I am will define who you are. Discover me and you'll find yourself. Are you with me? You've received the spirit of full acceptance. I no longer am in the slavery of never being good enough. Anytime you're thinking, is it enough? Am I good enough? Is this enough? Then that is the religious slavery in your mindset trying to suck you back in. Some of you might have never left, and you need to leave that right now. Just leave it. I break it off you in Jesus' name. Come into the full acceptance of who you are, enfolding you into the family of God, and you will never feel orphaned. For as he rises up within us, our spirits join him in saying the words of tender affection, Beloved Father. If you never think you're going to be good enough, you'll never become a son. But when you step into the full acceptance of who he is and who you are, then you will start to say, Beloved Father, I am a beloved son or daughter. It's a completely different way of thinking because the first thing that religious will, the religion will introduce you to is not Abba. It is your dirty garbage nature. Are you with me? Come on, I know some of you grew up in some of this too. Somebody with me grew up in this, especially in Arkansas. You grew up with how, how dirty and how, how nasty and how, hey, come on, man, you're just recovering alcoholic and you, I'm, I'm, I'm just a dirty old sinner saved by grace. I wish you had shut up. And take the grace to enter into something far greater than who you used to be. Dirty sinner doesn't even exist anymore because he says, I cast it. I never even forget it. I send it from the, as far as the east is from the west. And I have forgotten who you used to be. I only remember who you were before I formed you in the womb. I consecrated you. The spirit of full acceptance, the consecrated children of Yahweh. That's who I designed you to be. That he, he was saying in Jeremiah 1.5, I have carefully observed and molded you into shape to become. I was prophesying over you, and I was speaking over your life that you would become who I... Come on, before there was a dream on earth, there was a dreamer in heaven dreaming over your life and carefully observing you. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, he consecrated Jeremiah to be a prophet to the nations, and he's consecrated you to be something more than this dirty sinner in the earth that became saved by grace. He consecrated you to be a son and daughter of the Most High, to be a son of the kingdom. How are you ever going to release the kingdom when you can't get over the hiccups of yesterday? You'll never be good enough. No, I was created in His image. I don't need to eat anybody else's fruit to become like God. He made me like him, and I just need to come into the revelation and eat the fruit that he's given me. When I eat what he's given me, I become more and more like him. And there comes this moment where I say, yes, and I am becoming everything that as Christ is, I am in the world. Not, not, not later. Come on, man. Not, not later when, when it, the, the new Jerusalem comes down out of heaven. See, he's sending, he's sending his blueprint from there to here. Why are you waiting? Leverage this on earth as it is in heaven. I'm sending heaven into the earth. Get seated up here. Get seated up here and release up here down there. Man. Most theologies have you waiting on the blessed hope of Jesus so that it all can get made right in your life and all those issues will melt off. I'm not telling you that won't happen. Let me hear. Let me give you this. He is coming back. 
But stop waiting on him to come back to get all your issues fixed because you can become one with him now and you become a full son of who that he is. I don't have to wait on that. I can just receive it now and eat the fruit that he has for me now. I, I, say, I say it like this right here. Listen, you being an expert on the darkness in the, in the, in the earth, you being an expert on what, on what is good and evil, are you with me right now? Let me help you right here. You being an expert on what is good and evil is the evidence and the prophetic indicator that you've been eating from the wrong tree. You with me? Be not ignorant of his devices. You releasing life in the earth is the prophetic indicator of what tree you've been eating from. Solomon found a way back to the tree of life, and he's saying it like this. Hope deferred makes the heart grow sick, but a promise fulfilled is a tree of life. It's a tree of life. The promises of Yahweh getting fulfilled is me eating the fruit of his trees. Me becoming the expert of Fox News and how much darkness is in the earth. And I said Fox News because probably none of you are in here watching CNN. So I just needed to hit home where you're at, all right? If you are watching CNN, you should really turn that one off because they're, they're, they're uh, I don't know, you should, just, you should just turn that one off. Yeah. No, we're not, just for people watching on camera, we're not sponsored by Fox News. I'm just saying, get, quit, quit getting all your information from the news networks. Incline your ear to him. He's whispering about your identity. This is the last thing. I, I've said this to you before. I just want to review this right here, and I'm going to pray over you. Um, how do I discover who I am? You got to see him rightly. A.W. Tozer said it like this. The most important thing you'll ever do is to see God rightly. How do I see him rightly? I stop viewing him as a judge outside of a good father, but when I see him as a good father, then I can receive him as a judge. You with me? And when I see him as a good father, now I can receive him as a judge because now I can see, because if I got any fathers or mothers in the room, how many of you would just, would just come on, hey, come on, let, well, my kid just messed up, now I'm going to beat him. I'm, I'm just going. I'm going to beat him. Come on, man. I'm just going. I'm going to beat. Now I'm going to remind him of his mistake for the rest of his life. What kind of father or mother are you? But what if you said, "Come on. What if you said, son? I know you messed up, but let me help you right here. Let me help you. No, there's correction to be made because you love them. And if you'll correct it now, they might. Are you with me right now? This might not be who they are later in life because I spoke a word of life and correction over them that shifted a direction. Son, you're going in the wrong direction of thinking here, and I need to help you with, let me correct you with this. Let me, Daughter, let me correct you with this because I'm loving towards my children. Even when they drive me nuts, I still love them. Even when I'm hollering at them, and sometimes I do. I know it might not be as spiritual as you in your home. I know all y'all do is speak in tongues, but sometimes they drive me nuts, and I'm just like, don't like, like, dude, stop harassing me with a thousand questions of this. We'll get to it in a minute. And then I probably have to define harassment, you know. And, and it's like, like, like leave, leave me alone regarding this matter. We will do this later. I know that might not seem spiritual, but there's nothing in me that says, oh, I, I want to, come on, man. That, that, that because he messed up, I'm, gonna, I, I'm just going to disown him. If I can do this, how much more so does a Yahweh in heaven weeping over the sons to come home? Not so concerned about what pig pens they got stuck in, but just looking over the horizon with great joy. And the moment he sees them, he's running out to embrace them and said, here, son, take my robe. Here, son, take my ring. Here, son, take my sandals. God, here, here. Hey, 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 brother, go kill the fatted captain. Let's start celebrating, not because who he was, but because he came home and he came back into the sonship of who, I'm not even going to let you be a slave because you're thinking that you just 
just wanted to come home and be a slave in my father's house. And it, come on, slaves go barefoot, but I'm going to give you sandals saying that you're not a slave, you're a son. I'm going to give you a ring of authority, and I'm going to give you my righteous robe. And I'm going to say everything that's on you and the stench that's on you and what you came out of doesn't exist anymore because I have brought you back into my wings. This is where you belong and this is who you are the whole time. You just lost your way. Rediscover who you are. Matthew 16. Who do people say that I am? Some say thou art the... Some say, some say you're John. Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're one of the prophets. But who do you say that I am? Peter said thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. He first, revealed, he first identified who Yeshua was. And then Yeshua, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, starts identifying who Peter is. Thou art Peter, Petra, and on this rock I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Sometimes it feels like gates are prevailing against you, but you just need a greater perspective and say that the earth is full of the glory of God. And this whole earth is groaning, not for the manifestation of another religious duty, they're groaning for the manifestation of sons and daughters, but you'll never be sons and daughters if you don't get out of the religious duty. Religious duty is slavery. But the spirit of acceptance is saying that I am a consecrated one that became everything that Christ is in the world. That is such a hard pill to swallow. It's not hard for me to swallow this. Christ loves me. It's much harder for me to swallow this. He loves me just as much as he loved his beloved son. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. The scripture says it like this in Romans 8, 32, that if he, oh man, let me, I'm, I'm done, I'm done. Really, really, really. I'm not playing. Let me give you this, and I'm done. Verse, verse, 30, verse 32 for God has proved his love by giving. How did he prove it? He proved his love by giving his, us his greatest treasure, the gift of his son. The greatest gift that he has. Eve is introduced to an Abba that would withhold. Hello, Psalm 84, 11. No good thing will I withhold from them that, I, that walk uprightly. He's not withholding. And if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, then how much more so does the Father in heaven know how to give good gifts unto his children? He's not withholding. This God that withholds stuff from us, he gave me his greatest gift, the only begotten Son of God. And since he gave me his greatest gift, then it's a lie from the enemy that he would withhold anything else of his greatness from me. I just need to come into the maturity. How do I get into maturity? I continue to go on the impulses of Holy Spirit. The impulses of Holy Spirit leads me into a deeper level of sonship with him. Those that are led by God are the sons of God. He proved his love by giving us his greatest treasure, the gift of his son. And since God freely offered him up as the sacrifice for us all, he certainly won't withhold from us anything else that he has to give. What do you want? What do you want from the Father? He already gave you his greatest thing he could give you, so there's nothing else that he has. He said, I read it to you earlier in John 4, or first, first John 4, that you feast, feast on the treasures of heaven, of the heavenly realm. You have everything. You have everything. I already gave you my greatest thing. What makes you, what gives you the craziest, the crazy idea that there's something else that I'm not, that I'm holding from you? I'm not withholding anything from you, I'm giving it all to you. It's yours. Know who I am. I'm giving you keys to the kingdom, Peter. Stand with me. Oh, it's only 12.52. I should have went 20 more minutes. Ah. Father, everything that you have released in this place today, I thank you for the grace to have an ear to hear. Lord, that we don't just hear it and go home and say, man, that was a good word. 
but we hear it and we let it sweep out the dark corners of our heart and say that maybe every hairline fracture of my life has came out of the improper thinking that I was not good enough and I decided to try to eat fruit of a different tree because I refused, I refused, I refused to think that I could ever be enough. Father, I say you're enough. Father, I say over them and I prophesy over them and I say you are enough. I'm not telling you you didn't do something stupid seven days ago. I'm saying you are enough. Come into the full acceptance of sonship. Come into the full acceptance of the Spirit. Come into the full the fullness of the Spirit of acceptance that says you are a consecrated one in the earth. That he was dreaming this before you were woven in your mother's womb. I know, I know, I know Eve might have bought into the lie that I'm that I'm not enough and there's a God that's withholding from me. But God says, no good thing am I going to withhold from them that walk uprightly. God, let us get our posture right. Let us get our posture right. Those that are upright with the posture of praise, there's nothing that heaven has locked up to them. No heaven locked up. It's all open. The ones that are praising are receiving what Yahweh has for them. The sacrifice of your praise is the fruit of your lips. Open up your mouth and let the fruit of your lips go into the heavens as a reverence and worship and glory to Yahweh. And he starts releasing the things of heaven down into here. Their posture's right today. Let me give that to them. I'm not going to withhold anything from them. Their posture's right. I know somebody's been whispering to you saying that you're never going to be good enough, but let me give you this. You are beautifully and wonderfully made and you're so soul knows it very well. You need to come in alignment with what your soul knows very well. And your soul holds the secret to Yahweh's dream of your identity. Beloved son, beloved daughter, we invite you into the fold of the family. Stop living in the chains of religious slavery that's leading you into all the calisthenics and all the things that you thought you had to do to be enough. You're enough. You are enough. Stop living life freaking out over the opportunities that you thought you missed. Just embrace a good father that shows you even the error of your ways. And he said, I'm going to let you enter that again. There's a grace to seize it again. There's a grace to seize it again in Jesus' name. I speak that over. God, I thank you for all you've done today. I thank you, God, that we are becoming, God, it's even hard for me to say that we have become. But everything that you, it says everything that he is, so are we in the earth. God, let us, God, teach us this. Demonstrate this to us, Father, that we live in life union with you. And every season, fruit is being bore in our life. We're not subject to everything else. We're not distracted. That Romans 8 calls them distractions. The natural, the natural things of the earth are just distractions. But when you get the mind, the mind control of the spirit, the mindset of the spirit, that you're not blinded by all the distractions, but you've got this vision of Yahweh and everything else seems to not matter near as much. All those distractions of yesterday. Seek first the kingdom. I'll have all these things following you. The things I used to chase started chasing me because I found what I was supposed to be looking at. The one that finds the kingdom is like the one that found a treasure in the field. I'll sell everything to possess what that has. Father, I thank you for the for sale signs. I'm selling all these other things and all these other hanger-ons and all the, I'm selling all my fruit stands to eat your tree of life. Holy Spirit, I release that. God, I speak protection over them. Let them come into a fresh fire of baptism. Not get hung up on what it has to be and what religion told them it has to be and, and how, you know, this is, this is the evidence of this and this is the evidence of that. God, just let them come into oneness with you and let them receive the Spirit of Yahweh in greater measure. 
pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God, that, that God, I see, I see the cups of their spirit growing taller as the mold of Jeremiah's potter's wheel says that I'm increasing your cup size, but I'm still letting my measure be good, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Your capacity has increased, but it's still running over. Yeah, I speak that over them. God, I thank you for what you're doing. I speak protection over them. What they set their hand to, according to your words, is going to turn to gold. Or platinum, whatever's more valuable right now. We just say that over them. Wealth, prosperity, hope. A hope in a future. Hope deferred makes the heart grow sick, but God, we call forth the promise fulfilled, and we say it's the fruit of life. What you're doing in us, stirring and breathing. I thank you, God, for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Tasha, can you fix that back there? And listen, Michael already has. I got some steaks up here for you, not ribeyes, but... Although I saw 20 for $29 the other day. I don't really know why he was selling that out of the, you know, the truck in the parking lot, but whatever. That seemed like a really good deal, 29 for $20. I told my wife about it. I was really intrigued by it, but I didn't buy any. Um, we've got some stakes to put in the ground, and I want every family to take one home. And I want you to take one home, even if you live in an apartment complex and they don't want you to. I, I just encourage you to go stick it in a median somewhere. And, uh, and put that thing in the ground, write a scripture on it. If you don't know, I don't know what to write, then just put this on earth as it is in heaven. You might have to use two sides of that. I want you to take it and I want you to put it in, I don't care if you're renting the property. Take it and I want you to put it in the ground. We're staking out northwest Arkansas. We're staking out northwest Arkansas. I know some of you took some last week. But uh, if, if you want to take one, and if Holy Spirit has led you in the direction to put this anywhere else, I feel like that we're supposed to put one at Devil's Den State Park, and I can do that on my own, or one of you can go do that in the same, in the same authority. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it's, it doesn't have to be any more significant because, because I went and drove, drove it in the ground. If you want to do that, you're welcome to do that. We can, the more stakes we've got in the ground there, the better. And uh, so I'm, I'm just saying, let's, let's, drive, let's drive a stake in the ground, and we're claiming this area as this is God's land. This is God's land. Somebody sent me a dream even this morning, and, and, and I was in the dream. And in the dream, I went into a house that was ran down, and I said, this is where hope lives. And I was calling out to hope three times, and that house was in Fayetteville. And I'm telling you, hope is not lost. It may look ran down, and it may look forgotten, and it may look like it hasn't been well kept or taken care of, but I'm telling you, there's a people of God that are rising up that says a hope is alive. Whatever he's prompting you, I invite every family to take one of these and put it in your yard. Put it, you don't have to do it where it's going to tear up your lawnmower blade, but stick it somewhere. Drive it in the ground. What, it doesn't matter if it's all covered up and you can't even see it. Just put it in the ground. We're staking this out as God's, as God's country, as God's land. He's given it to us. Not just us at Kingdom Culture, but the kingdom people of the region. Amen? Blessings, guys. Uh, if you want to be baptized, don't don't forget we got that coming up. Uh, it was the second week of second week of September. We got that coming up. If you want, just text me, message me, whatever. Let me know. Bless you guys. We love you.